is set now as Holyfield prepares to defend two-thirds of the world championship in this weight class. Official representatives on hand from both the International Boxing Federation, that is the lady right there, Hiawatha Knight, and the WBA, also with a representative on the scene. Referee John Coyle of Great Britain brings the two fighters together in the middle of the ring. If you've just joined us on Showtime Championship Boxing, in an earlier bout, Dwight Muhammad Kawi scored a sixth-round technical knockout over Leroy Murphy, which has given Kawi the right to meet the winner of this bout. And if it is Holyfield, it will be a revenge bout. Holyfield took the WBA title from Kawi last July. Ocasio comes out and tries to get off first. Well, he's certainly fighting totally different right off the bat. I mean, he's, he has trained three months. He's come in to lay it out in the first round. That's exactly uh, what Holyfield would like. He would like an exchange. Holyfield is not a defensive fighter. He will take some punishment, but watch for the ability to finish combinations and indeed sometimes the opponent with either hand. In defense of Ocasio, if he needs one, uh, the, the fight with Kawi was taken after a year layoff, and he really did look flabby and sloppy in that fight. He's had three months of hard training now with uh, Gregorio Benitez, Wilfredo Benitez's father, and he certainly looks much sharper. I mean, he's, even his body looks much sharper today. Holyfield not yet able to land the combination. He's tried twice with the jab setting up the right cross. Benitez keeping up a running commentary, telling him to move, move, move. As soon as he, uh, as soon as uh, Ocasio gets still, Benitez starts hollering, move, move, move. The difficulty in watching Oswald Ocasio is that his punches, even when they land, don't have a great deal of steam or power to them. Round one of a scheduled 15 rounds. Holyfield has gone 15 once in his career. Ocasio has done it five different times. Few here expect the bout to go that distance. Chopping right hand by Holyfield, and Ocasio leaned back on the rope to get a better look. A little bit of the amateur in Holyfield, and I think he's getting already a little frustrated. It's only the first round. But already we have seen a, a great variety of ways to hold and grab and to tie up a fighter. Ocasio's a master at doing that. Good tactic. Just a little short with the right hand there was Holyfield, but he digs twice to the body and has got Ocasio standing still. This is a 20-foot ring, not as advertised 22, but 20 feet, which is uh, in Holyfield's favor. It's a lot less to run around. The ropes are rather loose, as you saw. Uh, Ocasio leaned back into him, and uh, they bent a great deal backwards, which is in Holyfield's favor again. Ocasio might like the 30-foot ring. You can probably hear the running commentary recommending the uppercut as a stratagem. Yes, because as Ocasio leans down, you just saw him lean down twice. He's wide open for an uppercut. And uh, Holyfield has just got to begin to control him with a jab and start taking over the fight at the temple. Holyfield right hooking to the body. It's much stronger than Ocasio. Punch is stronger than Ocasio. He just doesn't have the experience to know how to get away from a, a grasping, grabbing fighter. There, that's a perfect example of that. 
Which, by the way, is a perfectly legitimate boxing tactic. You don't have to fight every minute of every round if you're smart enough to hit somebody and hold them and get away with it, as he just did again. That's what a youngster like Hollywood feel, even though he's the champion, he has to learn how to control. Capacity crowd here in San Tropez. They are not the noisiest crowd you've ever heard. The French tend to treat boxing as as much a romantic art as a vicious blood sport. Is it a vicious they cringe a little bit during punishment. Is it a vicious blood sport? I never thought so. Holyfield doing much better, stepping up the action. He had top rope, goes way back, he just doesn't get the uh, support that he thinks he's getting when he leans back, because he, he leans too far back. Holyfield beginning to connect inside for me. Holyfield much, much faster hand speed and much sharper punches. Starting to put punches together, which he wasn't able to do in round one. I think those twin hooks to the body early in the round got Ocasio's attention. And now Holyfield is able to bear in and pin Ocasio against the ropes from time to time. He's coming in just as Benton uh, trained him. Double, triple jab, and then the right cross, and then a hook behind the cross. He just did that, that uh, last series of punches. He's just doing it again. Uh, the two or three jabs gets the other man on the defensive, not looking for the right hand. Comes the right hand, he thinks it's over with, and comes the left hook after that. So the perfect combination. And you can certainly see why lovers of hard punching love Holyfield. He delivers each blow with a purpose. And it's also why the Holyfield Dwight Cowie fight was such an attractive fight and so hard to judge, and why it's going to be so good coming up. Holyfield Solid right hand against the ropes by Evander Holyfield. Ocasio slinging him away and then backing up again. As long as Ocasio backs straight up like this and leans against the ropes, Ferdy, he's going to take a pounding. Charlie Holyfield doesn't forgive him any moment. I mean, he, he makes a mistake. Holyfield's there to make him pay. He's an active fighter. Much Young better strong. second round. Five days, and I have enjoyed it almost as much as Holyfield is enjoying I chasing I thought you were Ocasio. talking to Leroy Murphy in the hotel lobby. I was talking to Leroy's shirt, actually. <laughs> Round three of a scheduled 15. Bout began to turn in Holyfield's favor in round two. Be interesting to see what Gregorio Benitez has left at the end of the evening in that voice, Ferdy, if he keeps up at this rate. Well, I know him for many years, and I can tell you he can go into Christmas season without losing his voice. By the way, speaking of great fighters, his son, Wilfredo Benitez, was certainly a great fighter, maybe one of the youngest, if not the youngest man ever to win a title. As for Holyfield, he won the WBA cruiserweight title in that 15-round split decision over Kawi on July 20 of last year. WBA, of course, calls the title the junior heavyweight title. The other two governing bodies, the IBF and the WBC, both refer to it as the cruiserweight title. On May 15, with his third-round TKO of Ricky Parkey in Las Vegas, Holyfield took over the IBF version of the championship. Up ahead... If he were able to be defeat Ocasio tonight, about with Dwight Muhammad Kawi, a revenge battle for Kawi, and then potentially a bout with Carlos De Leon to attempt to unify the title in this weight class, and it is at that point that most suspect he will move up to the heavyweight division. Well, he's certainly fighting like a heavyweight right now. He is controlling Ocasio. He has had a series of pitch battles here, which Ocasio's lost every one, and Holyfield has really been powdering him. It is beginning to look like the wear and tear on Ocasio is showing. The one left hook about 15 seconds ago landed flush on the jaw of Ocasio, and he grimaced as he moved away. Ocasio continues. Easy to say, when, but when Holyfield's in front of you, 
pushing you against those ropes. There's nowhere else to go. That's what we talked about at the top of the show, cutting him off, dominating him with a jab. Everything we said at the beginning, Holyfield just showed in that last round, and it's beginning to pay off, and he's stepping up the gas. Holyfield using the jab now more in round four. As Ocasio slows down, the jab is more effective in controlling him. As it's more effective, the right hand comes in better. And all of it to the detriment of Ozzy Ocasio. Ocasio countered for a moment with the right. Holyfield digs back to the body. Ocasio has had uh, the unfortunate habit of punch, punch, and then grab. Holyfield, once he finds out that the punch, punch is going to be followed by grab, moves away and starts punching himself. Of course, that results in more punishment on Ocasio. Back to the ropes for Ocasio just then. You saw Holyfield there doing something he's tried to do, and there again, coming up the middle with the uppercut. Indeed, Ocasio holding his hands apart and making that available to him. You can almost see Holyfield turning on the heat a little bit at a time each round. It just gets a little bit more intensive. The punch is a little bit more meaningful. Again and again, his corner exhorting him, don't get on the ropes, don't get stuck on the ropes, punch and move. We're in round four of the scheduled 15. Beautiful double jab and a right hand by Holyfield. Double title holder Evander Holyfield dominating. Osvaldo Ocasio of Puerto Rico as he tries to retain his championship and point toward a second battle with Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Ocasio taking punishment against the ropes. Solid left to the head there by Holyfield. Holyfield just moves him from one rope to the other. Traps him on one rope, goes to the other rope. Ocasio beginning to wear out. chose to live in New York a few years back rather than to remain in Paris because of the difficulty of being a public figure in his own hometown. A difficulty which you've handled very well in Manhattan, I understand. And you in Tampa and Miami, Ferdy, everyone knows about that. Don't, let you, don't leave that Mobile, Alabama. It was very big there for you. Round five of a scheduled 15 now as Holyfield tries to press the attack once more. In case you joined us late here on Showtime Boxing in an earlier bout, Dwight Muhammad Kawi scored a sixth round technical knockout over Leroy Murphy to put himself in line for a shot at the winner of this fight. He, the, Ocasio is behind, obviously, 39 to 36. He's been losing the second, third, and fourth. But I, I, I feel that the quality of the fight is much superior to what we saw with uh, Dwight, uh, uh, Kawi. I mean, I just didn't, with Kawi, he just looked like he had nothing. At least here, he's trying hard. He's fighting back. He's getting outclassed by Holyfield. But uh, you, you see, you sense a desire on his part to fight, whereas I didn't see that at all with, uh, with Dwight. And that's what sort of infuriated me in a title fight to have a guy just open run. He's not doing that here. He's trying to fight. He's just getting outclassed. Well, if he has a desire to fight, Bertie, you have to assume that he has some uh, outside idea of winning. What strategy could he be employing here? Is he hoping that Holyfield will punch himself out? He's hoping he'll get tired. He'll make a mistake. Unfortunately, when you have a fighter that can't punch, <laughs> your options are rather closed because if you're even if you're waiting for him to get tired, you blow out all those first rounds, you're not going to knock him out. You're not going to outpoint him. So 
he is in a, a difficult position for uh, a man who can't punch and who is slowly, inexorably falling farther and farther behind. Ocasio has a record of 21 wins, three losses, and a draw, only 11 knockouts. And when a fighter at this level has knockouts in fewer than half of his bouts, then that is a fair indication that he can't punch because obviously many of the early opponents in the career of, of, are of lesser stature. That, that's exactly the point. All his knockouts came out early when he was fighting just opposition to get him uh, training fights. And then when he got up into the real divisions, um, he got hammered by Holmes and Saturday got knocked out by Dokes and won. Short right hand inside stunned Ocasio, who stopped movement for a moment, and Holyfield was able to press in and land a couple of more. Ocasio now flinching and merely trying to defend himself. Under Holyfield in the black trunks and Osvaldo Ocasio in the red begins. Holyfield defending his WBA junior heavyweight IBF cruiserweight crown in the 190 pound weight class. Very frisky on the part of Evander Holyfield. He's bouncing up and down now like if he was just having a wonderful time here. This bouncing up and down does him little good, though, doesn't it, Ferdy? He's do better off to settle down on his feet. It doesn't, doesn't do him any good, but when you're feeling frisky and everything's going your way, you're a little cultish. Well, what he did was allow Ocasio to land his first solid blow of the fight, yeah. a right hand. And the crowd responded because up to now it's just a one-way um, walk away. Might have been a bad idea for Ocasio. Evander is back down on his feet now. It was a bad idea. It's, it's obviously, if you're going to bounce around with a guy who can bounce around as good as Ocasio, that's his territory, not yours. Holyfield pressing forward, starting to use the jab again now. Follows with the right. Every round, Ocasio goes to the same spot on each corner and lays there and gets pummeled. Keeps that up, he's going to have to start paying rent on that top rope over there. Directly across from us. I mean, he just keeps laying there and getting killed. Come on, get up, get up! Get that jab and get up! One of the things that strikes you when you come to Saint-Tropez in the south of France is the uh, orderliness of the crowd and the quiet of the crowd. Holyfield measuring him. Ocasio tries to grin at him. It's a half-hearted effort. That's better when he punches back. Oh, there's that uppercut. There's the uppercut that Benton wanted. There it is again. Holyfield senses that he has Ocasio in trouble. Comes forward with the right hand. Ozzy's showing pretty good ability to take a punch. He is, and he's showing more fighting spirit. He's, he's fought better this round in spite of the fact that he's taking a good pace, and he's coming back. Not enough to win a round, but at least it was better than that one-way uh, beating he was taking. I think a fighter should evince some reluctance to take a beating from time to time just to make his uh, opponent feel that he's in a fight. Interesting that although Ocasio is eight years older, Holyfield is much more experienced in the ring. He had 170 friction after being out for several months as the result of injuries suffered in an automobile accident. It's nice to see Ace back in the Duva corner. And now Holyfield comes out to do business in round seven. And Holyfield feels slightly frustrated if not disappointed in not looking that much better. Although, how much better can you look against a, a guy that uh, is uh, fighting to survive rather than to win? Well, he's pitching a near shutout by our card. Maybe he lost the first round, as you said, but certainly he's won every one since then. Interesting that people speculate he may meet Tyson down the road. This is just the kind of frustration that Mike Tyson has had to learn how to deal with in bouts against opponents who fight defensively and simply won't allow him to knock them out. I think Tyson's trouble is mainly of size and defense. When little guys try to be defensive like that, he eats them up. But when these huge, tall heavyweights like Pinkman, Thomas, and um, 
Mitch uh, Green. Mi oh, Mitch Green was uh, an awful fight in the in the Garden. Uh, Bone Crusher Smith. Bone Crusher Smith. Oh, uh, quick, tell us all of them. Just grabbed the last ten rounds of the Tucker like, fight. Smothered yeah. him like like, like a, an octopus and just couldn't. couldn't and as much loose. as Kevin Rooney will yell punch out of the clinches, it's a lot easier said than done. Well, at the end of uh, this circus, we have it 59-54 at the end of six for a Hollyfield, giving, as um, my partner Jim Lampley said, only the first round to Oswald Ocasio. Although I do not hesitate to point out that I feel Ocasio is fighting a much better fight than he did against Kawhi. Yet he was given credit for victory in the Kawhi bout, and here he is well behind. Remember, uh, this is quite unofficially. Uh, we're just sitting here idly looking at this. There are three judges, two from Venezuela, who might love defensive fighting, seeing it quite differently. I am sure that uh, Lou Duva, Ace Murata, would not like to see this go to a decision. Want to see that uh, EKO or KO on uh, Holyfield's record. Ferdy, if he's winning this bout, the ghost of Sugar Ray Leonard is much more than an imaginary apparition. It is moving pens on paper at these judges' stands. <laughs> Seventh round of a scheduled 15 in San Chope on La Côte d'Azur. Pieces of tape, little flick of tape coming off a Holyfield club, which will result uh, ultimately in uh, having to put some more tape on it or else stopping the bout for Duba to do that. The action has a sameness. It's the heat. A million degrees, as I described it, with a thousand percent humidity. But now we're down to about 990,000 degrees. Now, I would like to just play devil's advocate for a moment. That last round, which you and I so glibly gave, 10-9, there could have been, with the ghost of Sugar Ray Leonard hovering over the two Venezuelan judges, a dim, remote possibility that in some way, somehow, they saw that as a defensive masterpiece on the part of Ocasio, in that he didn't get pummeled as much as he did the other rounds and may have given it to him. You see what I'm saying? That would bring my confusion with regard to boxing scoring to a, a newly elevated level, Ferdy. That's true. One wonders, but of course anything's possible. One wonders, as we spoke earlier this morning, if scores were announced between rounds, as we tried to do in NBC for a year, if the boxers would fight any differently. Would Ocasio fight any differently if he knew that Lampley had him behind by such a huge score? My guess, Ferdy, just as uh, a layman with less exposure to the sport than an expert like yourself, is that it wouldn't make much difference. My personal belief is that 99% of the time a boxer gives you what he's got in the ring and uh, will do so regardless of whether he's ahead or behind. Often, they don't seem to hear what they are told in their corners. That's exactly how it proved to be in our experimentation on NBC. When, when asked after the fight, the boxer always said, I didn't hear him, I don't know what I was doing. All I did was I had to fight this guy in front of him, so you're exactly correct. The boxers apparently don't care. They just want to fight what's happening, and they want to take care of what's happening in front of them. In this case, it's Holyfield now beginning to step up the pursuit of Oswald Ocasio, who is beginning to get a little speed in his retreat. Does that mean, Ferdy the Fight Doctor, that you favor progressive scoring announced at the end of each round and made public? No, I don't. I, we did it every which way, and I want to tell you, it didn't add anything, it didn't take anything away, it didn't change anything, and I, I felt that um, I liked it the way it is right now. I'm, I'm maybe in a minority, but I like it the way it is right now. You see anything different happening in this fight as opposed to what's gone down for the last six rounds prior to this? No, it's the same uh, Holyfield in the attack. Ocasio trying to skip and, and uh, use his superior boxing uh, defensive skills, but no offense to gain points. That's it. You think any doubts will arise uh, with regard to Holyfield if he's forced to settle for a decision and is unable to get Ocasio out of there? No, I don't, because I, I think he's a young man facing a, a difficult opponent. After all, uh, Ocasio's only been knocked out twice, once both by heavyweights, both by the champion. Larry Vanna White is waiting for it. It should be the Vanna White and Dave Dial show. 
And in the background, you hear the pleasantries being exchanged at uh, the end of that interview, which was indeed uh, a beautiful thing. Well, it's been three years since Evander Holyfield graduated from amateur boxing along with his Olympic classmates of 1984, Mark Breland, Pernell Whitaker, Frank Tate, Meldrick Taylor, Henry Tillman, Tyrell Biggs, and several others. He was the first in the group to win a world championship, despite not having won a gold medal at Los Angeles, where he was disqualified after the semifinal bout with New Zealand's Kevin Barry for punching on the break. Most of you will remember, if you saw it, Barry going down from a punch that Holyfield threw just as the referee called for a break. He was awarded a bronze medal, and the Yugoslavian fighter who won the gold pulled Evander up onto the stand with him. Early in his professional career, he demonstrated tremendous potential, went on to fulfill it by winning that title against Kawi last summer. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, Ferdy, the speculation is that much better and indeed bigger in terms of weight class things are on the horizon for Evander Holyfield. As often happens when you see a, just a whole team of guys win the gold medal, the most unlikely one, I'm not saying that Holy, Holyfield is certainly not in talent unlikely, but the others got the publicity, they got the magazine covers, they got the big contracts. Holyfield just came out of nowhere. I think he is, if you look at him, in comparison with the rest of the group, he is far ahead of him. He's developed better than, and faster than Breland and better and faster than Pernell Whitaker and Meldrick Taylor, although those three youngsters are well on the way to being in the top ranks of boxing. Breland, of course, already being a champion. But they haven't had the sparkle to hit the uh, charisma, the sizzle that the Holyfield has. Of course, that natural. has to do with the weight and has to do with the prospect of... Uh, uh, fighting uh, Tyson down the, down the road. I mean, what's in store for Breland? I mean, you can't name opponents that are wonderful for him to take on. The oh. Breland camp complains that they have been unable to lure Lloyd Hunnigan into a welterweight unification battle. Breland, of course, will face off against Marlon Starling in defense of his WBA World Welterweight Championship next weekend in Columbia, South Carolina. And if he can win that bout, then he will defend the title here on Showtime in the fall. Benito is the same to him. Put your right hand in there, he'll fall. Meaning Holyfield will fall in the meantime. He, Ocasio looked over there in disbelieving agony, like saying, are you kidding? Good left hand right there by Holyfield. He was able to bring it over the top. For it so far, Ferdy. 89-82. Holyfield ahead. Ocasio now looking more like the Ocasio of old in that he was running much faster, looking very tentative and almost um, apprehensive as Holyfield closes in with that heavy punching. If you have not found spine-tingling excitement in this bout, let us say that there's something about Ozzy Ocasio which tends to eliminate, to a certain degree, the chance of that happening uh, in a bout at this level. It almost robs you of your senses because along about the middle of the fight, you have an overwhelming urge to close your eyes. But then you feel like you might miss something because young Mr. Holyfield is doing all he can. He's doing 100% to get rid of Ocasio and not have to uh, wonder about the ghost of Sugar Ray Leonard. Ocasio landed a pawing left. Closest thing he's mounted to an assault in recent rounds. Holyfield has not been as sharp for the past two rounds. Perhaps he is indeed beginning to tie. Or get frustrated. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to keep up that high speed when the other guy's just running, grabbing, pawing. It, it, in order to fight, you have to have two people. It's like playing a, a tennis game where a guy's just lobbing the ball back quietly. No matter what you do, he lobs it back. I mean, pretty soon you're getting your interest wings. Should we replay some of the color shots of San Tropez? I'd like to see talking to his two relatives on, on the uh, bench there, having a drink. I, I've never seen him so relaxed. More relaxed than we've ever seen him. Como-esque, I'd call it. Oh, good right hand, good left hook. Best punch oh, of the fight. Oh, solid right hand. Evander trying to finish. 
first genuine trouble that Ocasio's in two punching punches by Holyfield Holyfield digs to the body Ocasio holds here comes Evander again we are in round 10 of a scheduled 15 Ocasio flat-footed has very little left in his legs he's uh, working on very dead legs Duva yelling it's the nature of boxing you build your career on fading fighters that had become increasingly inevitable during the last minute of round 10. We are now in the first minute of round 11. Ocasio takes the mandatory eight, looks to his corner and to Gregorio Benitez, tries to deliver a right hand, and now prepares to try to weather another storm. He got hit a bruising uppercut as he got in. Of course, Holly feels zeroing in, knowing this could end right now. You get the feeling Ocasio certainly doesn't want any more. Holyfield a little wild at first, now tries to go back to concentrating on the body. Ocasio just getting pumped. Then Luke. That's quite enough for British referee John Coyle and by technical knockout in the 11th of the scheduled 15, Evander Holyfield retains his WBA junior heavyweight, IBF cruiserweight crowns, and sets up a second match with Dwight Muhammad Kawi. And that's got to be a wonderful match. I mean, because Dwight has all that energy burning in him. And of course, Holyfield is dying to come back and show much better than he did the first time against Dwight Kawi. I, I found this fight not quite what I expected, as it, um, as we will see, with one punch, you see that top rope giving way, and, and that punch was so hard that the referee had to come in and stop. He did it again, correctly. The referee comes in, stops the fight, as he should have. No, no.